I've said it before, and I'll say it again and again. Team Fortress 2 is my favorite video game of all time. I've clocked in over a thousand hours in this game, and I keep coming back. And every time I come back, I wonder why I ever stopped playing. It's just so goddamn fun, from just shooting some people, to hanging out with friendlies, to trading hats, to just listening to people banter over the voice chat. <laughs> ah! He crit me! <laughs> no! He found me! There isn't a single situation where I launch this game and have a bad time. I could go on and on about this game and how fantastic it is, how the community keeps it alive after the developers all but abandoned it. The problem is that this game is massively popular, so there's nothing I could say that hasn't already been said about a hundred times before. So this isn't a game review, this is a cartoon review. If you haven't played TF2, you may have seen the animated promotional videos for the game. TF2 was one of the first games to start doing stuff like this. Back in the day, PC game trailers used to be just clips of gameplay or pseudo gameplay, maybe a sweeping shot showing off the map and how the characters looked. TF2 even had trailers like this too, just footage straight from the game. But TF2, from what I can tell, is the first notable game to have trailers and promo videos like this. They're fully animated and focus more on the characters and what they do more than the game itself. This is the only game that I could think of back then that could even do that. It only had 9 characters, so they had time to come up with compelling personalities. That's the main appeal of these videos. That's what a lot of people started playing the game for. Valve, the developers of Team Fortress 2, created their own animation software specifically to create these trailers. Source Filmmaker is what they call it now. Unlike most animation software, and unlike animations made by other game developers today, SFM is just a copy of Team Fortress 2, modified to hell and back, until it works just like animation software. This means that we created all of our movies on location, inside the video game world. While the movie's playing back, we can pause, reach into the frame, and change something. That's not a 2D video that you're looking at. You're looking at the 3D world of the video game. So when you see these videos, this is all in the actual game. This is how the game looks, how the characters look, and how the other models look. The main series of videos Valve made for this game are the Meet the Team promos. Meet the Heavy was the first one, and this video is what cemented him, the Heavy, as the poster child for the entire game. I am Heavy Weapons Guy. And this is my weapon. This is the first and worst of all the Meet the Team videos, and when I say worst, I don't mean in any way that it's bad. This video is an internet classic. I bet I can recite the whole thing from memory from the amount of times I've watched it. It shows off the Heavy's character extremely well, it shows that he's a sleeping bear of a man. A strong Russian mercenary with a soft spot for his gun and bullet. The problem compared to the rest of the videos is that it's not very in-depth. Which is understandable, since this was the first one in the series. Kind of an experiment on Valve's end. <laughs> Cry some more. If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight! Meet the Soldier was released a few months after Meet the Heavy. A character like the Soldier is really difficult to represent, and I think this video did a good enough job dealing with his character. What's different about this video from Meet the Heavy is that this one showcases what seems to be some actual gameplay. Now, they made Soldier's character something that I'm just gonna call Goofy and Brain Dead, which fits perfectly because when you play Soldier, you need to, yourself, become Goofy and Brain Dead. Look at the goofy stuff he can do like rocket jumping and market gardening. No other character in the game has viable strategies as silly as that. The Brain Dead part of Soldier is represented by the, duh, I'm gonna click on the medic and he's gonna explode. He's an easy character and one of the best characters to pick up if you're just starting the game. Still one of the less impressive the videos have the bunch, however. Hey look buddy, I'm an engineer. The next Meet the Team video, released on 9-11 if that matters, was Meet the Engineer. Now this is one of my favorite videos in the series. There's no action in this one, at least not on screen. Use more gun. It 
It showcases the engineer pretty well, showing that the focus of his gameplay is mostly behind his sentry gun, thus most of the shots in the video pointing behind his sentry gun. It shows his character really well, as a soft-spoken, hard-working, straight-talking, gun-slinging, problem-solving, philosophically indifferent, practically driven, structurally integral Texan. His playstyle is perfectly represented, other than the fact that the only building shown in this video is his sentry. He's a very defensive, slow-building character, which is shown by him just chilling, drinking a beer, watching his sentry rack up some kills as he protects the intelligence. I love this video, it's one of my favorites in the series, even if it is just because of how he talks. Not problems like what is beauty, because that would fall within the purview of your conundrums of philosophy. I solve practical problems. The last video to be released before the game came out, in fact, just the day before the game came out, was Meet the Demo Man. Oh, I love this black Scottish Cyclops. And I think this video is the most underrated of the Meet the Team series. If I were a bad Demo Man, I wouldn't be sitting here discussing it with you now, would I? This one follows the same structure as a documentary, with some interview clips to let you know his character, with some B-roll of some pseudo-gameplay showing his functions in-game. The Demo Man is my favorite character in the whole game. He feels like he has the most personal personality and the best lines out of all the cast. I'm a grim bloody fable with an unhappy bloody end. Meet the Demo Man is my second favorite video out of the whole series. And during my research for this video, I learned what he said during the part that was bleeped out. Here it is. They gotta make it out. I'm a black Scottish Cyclops. They got more feckin' sea monsters in the Great Locket Ness and they got the likes of me. Um, I, I don't even know where to start with you. I mean, do you even know who you're talking to? Meet the Scout was released half a year after Meet the Demo Man. This one gets all of the action and gameplay out of the way at the very beginning. The rest of this video is styled kind of like Meet the Demo Man as a kind of documentary interview spliced in with B-roll footage of him beating up a blue heavy for a goddamn sandwich. This is one of the shorter, less interesting Meet the Team videos, which is kind of disappointing since the Scout is such an interesting character. This dude reeks of personality. That said, this is still one of the most memorable Meet the Team videos. Just like Meet the Heavy, it's full of fantastic quotes. I'm pretty sure every line in this whole video is quotable. Here's some of my favorites. Yo, what's up? Basically, grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, boink! Kind of a big deal. I'm a force of nature. I hurt people. Boom! If you were from where I was from, you'd be fucking dead. Meet the Sniper was released a couple months later. This is another short one, with not as many good quotes as Meet the Scout, so it's often forgotten. I still remember this one, though. I guarantee you'll not go angry, because at the end of the day, long as there's two people left on the planet, someone is gonna want someone dead. The weird thing about this video is how the sniper is portrayed as a character compared to how he is in-game. He feels dishonest in this video, not as obviously as in Meet the Scout, but I actually think that's what Valve was going for. This is supposed to be a documentary series, a series about how fantastic all these mercenaries are, how they're such fantastic yet misunderstood people. Let me show you. I'll play some stuff that the sniper says in the video, and then some stuff from the game that completely contradicts what he just said. Professionals have standards. Be polite. Keep you up in that big mouth while it's still attached to your bloody neck. Nobody's gonna miss you, you mutant. Thanks for being such a whopping big target, mate. It's challenging work. You're making this so easy. I'm actually getting worse. I'm just getting warmed up. Bloody hell, you're awful. I'm not a crazed gunman, Dad. I'm an assassin. I'm gonna blow the insides of your head all over four counties. Everything above your neck's gonna be a fine red mist. I'm gonna turn you into colored rain. You get all that? Okay, moving on. Um, <clears throat> Gentlemen. Almost a whole year goes by before Valve released Meet the Spy, and I would be lying if I said it wasn't worth the wait. I'm sure that there are a ton of people involved in this community that would definitely call Meet the Spy their favorite video in the series. 
This is the longest video in the series so far, at three whole minutes. That doesn't seem long, but Valve has a way of condensing details down and getting points across very efficiently. One of the details from this video is this shot, where the sniper gets his cheek cut and then puts his hand up to see that there's blood. And then he dies. Now get this. Before the video came out, the sniper looked like this. After, they gave him a little scar on his cheek. Ain't that the definition of Nintendo polish? I mean Valve polish. Meet the Spy missed one major point about the spy, however. So he's French, we got that. He's called Scout's mom his little oh, cauliflower. Yeah, I don't... I don't know either. I don't know why that's an acceptable pet name, but French romance is weird, don't worry about it. So he's French, he's got a revolver, he can sap sentries to destroy them, he's got a knife so he can stab someone in the back and kill them instantly, he can disguise as anyone in the whole game, and that's all? No, they didn't show him going invisible, what the hell? I didn't even think of this until I watched this again in order to make this video, and now it pisses me off to no end. Now I can't watch this video the same way, knowing that one of the most important parts of Spy's kit isn't shown in the video. Damn it. What the- Wait, wait, he... uh... Indeed. And now he's here to f us! Now we go through the longest drought of Meet the Team videos. Over two years go by before Meet the Medic was released. For good reason, too. FREEDOM! For those two years, Valve was drumming up the perfect reason to release this video. And let me tell you, was Team Fortress 2 going completely free to play the biggest event in the entire game's history? I actually bought TF2 only a couple weeks before this happened, and what did I get for it? A hat. A baby puke green hat. I can't even paint this thing, at least let me paint it white or pink or something. This is awful. How could you do this to us, Valve? How could you do this to me? What do I have to do to get your respect, game? Please. Anyway, Meet the Medic is my personal favorite video in the bunch. The visuals are fantastic. The music is some of the best in the whole game. The Medic himself is an extremely entertaining character. Just like Meet the Spy, there's quite a bit of back and forth between characters. These two are the only Meet the Team videos that did that, and I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't do it more. Most hearts couldn't withstand this voltage. But I'm fairly certain your heart... What was noise? the sound of progress, my friend. The video showcases almost perfectly how the medic plays, too. He's got a gun that heals people instead of hurting them, and if you use that gun enough, you can make someone invincible for a little bit. I love all the subtle details in this video, too. This one is packed full more than any of the others. I love that the cardiogram in the background is reading fine, and as soon as the heavy's heart explodes, it flatlined. That's such a cool detail that so many other animators would have missed an opportunity to put in. I'm pretty sure everyone noticed the Loch Ness Hamster label, but did you know that Valve changed something in the game as a reference to this video? At the end of Meet the Medic, Scout had the dove Archimedes stuck inside him after his surgery. Archimedes? But in-game, if you kill a Scout so hard that he explodes, there's a 1 in 1,000 chance that a little dove will fly away, along with all of his blood. And who's in that window? Is that Miss Pauling? I don't know, we'll talk about her later, but for now... Meet the Pyro is the final video in the series. At this point, Valve knows what they're doing when it comes to animation. So this is arguably the most well-animated one in the series. When we knew we were getting a Pyro update, everyone was hyped up for this final installment. And I'll just say, it kind of surprised everyone. What dreams of chronic and sustained cruelty. As hilarious as it is that Pyro is shown to be this deranged lunatic that lives in a fantasy world and doesn't realize that he's killing everyone around him, these visuals don't do it for me. I really like it when it cuts to reality. The visuals in regular TF2 are so good, don't take me away from them. Ugh, this is too colorful. Take me back to the interviews in the dark room. I like that. I wish the whole video was like that, but it wasn't. At least a good chunk of the video is in reality and not a fantasy world. I guess it would have been worse if the whole thing was colorful puke. Ugh, and now you can see it in the game. Ugh.
Well, that's all the Meet the Team videos. I wish there could have been more. There are only nine classes in the game. You can only really make nine videos, right? Wrong! Look at how stupid and wrong you are. How about we make a video about a sandwich? Boom! Meet the sandwich. They didn't even really animate this one. Half of the video is just one of two still images. It's hilarious. You're just looking at the inside of a fridge for a whole video while a bunch of characters talk outside. TF2 seriously is the only game that could have pulled off something as absurd as this. What else is there? The Engineer Update Trailer. Ooh, this one is super short, but it was packed full of details. People analyzed every frame of this thing, and the main thing they got was the schematic of a robot scout. This is one of the earliest hints towards Man vs. Machine being in development. Of course, we'll talk about that later. We got the Mac Update Trailer. Not much to talk about here, except that one of the most popular PC games at the time was brought to Mac. Kinda big. The only thing I can really say about this one is I like how the audio editing was done. It's pretty cool. I have a MacBook, but I don't use it for games, so I don't really care. I don't know. Oh look, it's the Frontier Justice that got added in the Engineer update later. Next we had the replay update and the free-to-play update videos, but those didn't really have any animation in them, just gameplay footage and clips from the Meet the Team videos. So those I'm just gonna skip over. But next, ooh boy. Next we have one of the most watched videos on the entire Team Fortress YouTube channel. Man versus Machine. This was probably the most anticipated update to TF2 ever. Suddenly, a game about two teams of 12 players duking it out over a bomb became a game about one team of six players defending a base against hordes of literal money-burning robots. This animation is gorgeous. Not a single word is spoken in it, but you know some serious stuff is about to go down. From the fantastic music at the beginning to the rundown environment, you get all the info you need about what's happening. This is basically the apocalypse, and the red and blue teams have finally banded together to fight against the robot uprising. The way these robots move too, oh my god, they're shaky and jittery just like you'd expect a real robot to be. If I know anything about Valve, it's that they know goddamn well how to animate a robot. I just can't get over the environment in this video, it's just so perfectly constructed for the point it's trying to make. The ominous lightning strike in the distance, all the snow lacking footprints, the buildings with all their lights shut off, and my favorite part of it all, the thick fog that shrouds the robots as they're slowly revealed. It's actually surprisingly artistic. Up next we have the annual Saxy Awards video. So let me explain the Saxies real quick. At the time that Meet the Pyro came out, Valve released Source Filmmaker, their in-house animation software that I mentioned earlier, for free to the public. You can literally go on Steam right now, search up Source Filmmaker for yourself, and download it for free. Now the Saxy Awards is like Valve's version of Sundance or more like Valve's version of a high school short film short case. Either way, the point of the Saxy Awards is for Valve to bring attention to their animation software by holding a contest for who can make the best short film using Source Filmmaker. Anyone can enter as long as they use Source Filmmaker to animate, and then the community votes on their favorite video from each of the five categories. Not only is this a really fun way to showcase some of the best animators who play Valve's games, I should probably mention that the Saxies have extended beyond TF2 by now, but it's a fantastic marketing strategy to push Source Filmmaker as an animation program for independent animators. People see these animations, let's just say the overall winner from last year, Agent Gun, and see how powerful the Source Engine can be as an animation tool. So now that Source Filmmaker is so widespread and well-known, you have tons of independent animators working with this program. You can go on YouTube and search SFM and you'll get thousands of TF2 animations. Just keep it to YouTube. You don't want to know what you get if you just Google it. God, the things I wish I could unsee. With Source Filmmaker out of the way, let me get back to the video. 
There's not much to talk about, however. It reuses voice lines from Meet the Spy. The animation is there, it's good. There isn't much in the way of detail or easter eggs in this one, other than the fact that they made a reference to the glitch with the spy where the Saxi, the item, doesn't go invisible along with the spy himself. Yeah, when you win the Saxi Awards, you get an in-game statue that turns people into gold when you kill them. Pretty neat. Next up is a single 15 second ad spot that played on Adult Swim, using TF2 and its affinity for hats to promote The Venture Brothers, a show that I haven't watched. There isn't much to talk about the ad itself other than the fact that this is the only ad for TF2 to ever play on TV, which is really impressive to me. A game this popular was never promoted outside of Valve's own circle until years after its release. Now, Robotic Boogaloo is the first update for Team Fortress 2, which Valve itself made absolutely no content for, including the promo video. Valve actually contracted this video from an animator named Brent Kennedy, who was known for some TF2 videos and a previous entry in the Saxi Awards. This was a really cool update and an interesting video to go with it. Valve got a bunch of creators in the community to take a bunch of existing hats in the game and make robotic metallic versions of them. For not being animated by Valve, but still being an official TF2 short, the video is pretty well done. I will say that this animator has vastly improved since he made that video, since he went on to win a Saxi in 2017, and animate another short for Valve. The Sound of Medicine is not what he worked on. This is another one animated by Valve. It showcases the Medic, and a bunch of new features he got for the Two Cities update to Man vs. Machine. I love the way this video plays out, it has that same apocalyptic feeling that the original Man vs. Machine trailer had. But this time it feels like the war's been going on for months or even years. After everyone dies, the Medic showcases his new in-game abilities, which involves resurrecting people from the dead. Like, I get the Ubercharge immortality thing, but man, this is just cheating. I always thought the medic had the coolest visuals, and this video doesn't disappoint. The way all of the heavy's body parts get magnetized together, and then he's just back to perfect health, is incredible to watch. I like the shield too, it's not as impressive visually, but you get a good idea of how good the ability is. For such a big update, it's a really good video, just long enough to cover what it needs to. Freedom! Now, if you want to talk about big updates and big videos, you're gonna have to talk about the next video, Expiration Date. If I had a list of my top 10 favorite YouTube videos ever, this would probably be number two. I've watched this video dozens of times, about a quarter of those times in the middle of writing this script for this video. Hot damn is this a fantastic short. It's actually so long, in fact, that I'm gonna have to give you a plot synopsis real quick. When the mercenaries learn they have three days to live, Scout wants to go on a date with his administrator's assistant, Miss Pauling. Since Scout is so terrible with ladies, he enlists Spy to train him how to go on a date with her. Meanwhile, the medic and engineer are studying the teleporters to find out what's killing them. There's also something about Soldier and a giant bread monster, and you know what, just go watch the video yourself if you haven't already. I'll be waiting for when you get back to keep talking about it. This video is one of the most quotable short films out there. It's not even an ad for a game at this point, it's a legitimate animated short film. There are so many good quotes in this film, which stays faithful to the game itself, with each character spitting out one-liners at every opportunity. A long video like this really does give the characters a lot more personality that they ever would have gotten if they just stayed in game. Seduce me. You. Seduce me. What? Spy, I ain't gonna- SEDUCE ME! Right. Right, okay. The Spy and Miss Pauling are my favorite characters in this film. They've got so much going on in their lives, it feels like they have real emotions and ambitions. Especially with Miss Pauling, other than seeing her in some of the official comics, yes, TF2 had comics as well, we've never really gotten to see her in full action swing. This film gave me the idea, the one thing that's on the top of my video game wish list, of a story based single player game set in the TF2 universe where you get to play as Miss Pauling and team up with all of the nine mercenaries throughout. Now that would be a fantastic game. Valve, please make this, or at least get Turtle Rock to make it, I don't care. I will give up my entire Steam library, my Switch, my my Wii, my car, hell, even my current computer to play that game. The animation and expiration date is so much better than all the other animated shorts. And like all the other ones, it's completely packed with subtle details. Let me show off a few of the subtle details that I found after watching a few hundred times. Here's the soldier looking at the loaf of bread, and then he slowly gets sad when the medic takes it away. 
Then when the medic shows the tumors in the bread, the heavy stops eating and looks concerned at his sandwich. And then in a later shot, he just shrugs and keeps eating, just as a background gag, it's great. But he still looks a little concerned. And then when the medic says that they have three days to live, Spy gets a concerned look before the camera zooms in, like he wasn't expecting to die that quickly. It's a really nice detail that just lets you look into the mind just a little bit more. And then in the next scene when this happens... This is a bucket. Dear God. There's more. No. Look at Spy's face. The look he gives is just priceless, like he wants to say something or call the soldier an imbecile or whatever. But then he realizes it would just be pointless and ends up moving on. That's like better than the soldier's line itself. I think it actually makes it about 10 times funnier. I think the Spy has all the best facial expressions in the whole film. There's that one. There's the one he gives when he's looking at Scout's drawings, when he lets the Scout into a smoking room, when Scout says he's gonna put on the date by himself. Yourself. That's right, fancy pants, myself. So why don't you take your little failure, roll it up sideways, and okay, crap, I gotta go. And Spy has to hold back a smile, but his mouth is just twitching a little bit. He's just such an expressive character. I feel like there is one guy in charge of animating the Spy's face and nothing else. Another subtlety is this fork going into the demo man's bad eye, which is just a pretty good visual gag that you'd miss if you weren't really looking for it. When Scout stands up in the desk, he has to sit back down a second to actually get out of it. And my favorite, this little movement here. This little subtle realization, like, oh crap, my scooter fell over, I should fix that. But really, I should probably kill the briefcase thief first. This kind of stuff is just something you don't ever see any other animation studio doing in movies or shorts or anything. This last one is kind of one you have to be keeping track of, and these aren't all the subtleties in the video. But right here, in this shot, you see one of the medic's doves, and the film doesn't even give it the time of day at first. A few shots later, and you can just barely see the cage being knocked open and the dove escaping. And that's that dove! That's the dove that got eaten by the bread monster and came out perfectly undigested later. I just thought that was really cool. I thought all these subtleties were good, like Valve really looked into every detail about this video and worked painstaking hours to get it done. But then, while looking after the subtleties, I started to notice the errors. Like the medic had his backpack in this shot, but his hands were clipping through it, and in the rest of the film his backpack is gone, and in this scene the pyro's grenades are sideways sometimes, and Nolan North voiced the engineer in this film, and Spy pours his glass in this black liquid that goes all the way through the drink. And in this shot, there's a floating lighter, and in this one, the pyro's hand is even touching the bottle. But his other hand is clipping through the bottle, and then the spy is just straight up spills the drink. And the engineer upgraded his gun, and then the gun really again in the next shot. And then the heavy gets over the target, but the medic doesn't, and the engineer's gun barrels on spinning. All in all, this is the best TF2 animation that Valve has ever made, and like I said, my second favorite YouTube video of all time. And it makes me sad to say that it was followed by one of the least interesting shorts, exactly a day later. The Spoils of Love and War isn't a video worth talking about after expiration date, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Now, End of the Line was a video that people were waiting for for upward of a year. It's another community-made film, almost as long as expiration date, but didn't feature any new lines recorded by the voice cast. I definitely didn't like this one as much as expiration date, mainly because of that, but also because there was a lot of fluff in this video. There wasn't much room for subtleties. Actually, that's a lie. There was room for subtleties, but the team that made this video just didn't really pull it off like Valve could have. Also, some of the animation just doesn't feel right for whatever reason. It's just a little too stilted or something. I can't really put my finger on it. The action and the drama in this videos were really well done. However, I don't think TF2 is the kind of place for serious drama like this. This video just felt too serious to me, you know? The Invasion update was an update I completely missed. Like, I don't think I played TF2 for the couple months that the update stuck around. We got this video, made by the same guy who made the Robotic Boogaloo video. Which I'll tell you is actually really well made. You can tell there was a lot of custom modeling that went into making the characters in the movie, the building that broke apart, and there are Valve-esque subtleties here with the Scout and Demo Man. <laughs> Look at the poor man, trying to use depth perception. It's not gonna do you any good if you're drunk anyway, lad. The next video is made by Valve again. The Meet Your Match video. 
It really hammers the point home that in all of these shorts, the blue team just gets their ass handed to them. No, I'm serious, go back and watch every TF2 video and tell me if the blue team ever wins in the end. I'll save you the time, it's always red that comes out on top. Every time! And they make an even bigger ordeal in this video. Look, the sniper's missing a leg, that's so sad. Alexa, play Red Triumphs. Last one, we're finally at the end of the list. Jungle Inferno features the red team investigating a spooky abandoned island. Ooh, yeah, it's spooky. This video finally features some new voice lines from just the scout. Well, that's fine. But wait, this video features the main man, everyone's favorite shirtless Australian, the CEO of Manco himself, Saxton Hale. Yo, they'll escape. Nature finds a way. <laughs> that was the whole money boy! This man is an absolute legend. I love his design, I love the way he talks. I wish there was more of him in all the other videos. We've only seen him in promotional images and the comics, but this is the first time him and his voice have officially appeared in a video. The video itself is pretty good too, better than what we got after expiration date. So, that's it. That's all the videos, for now. We may get more animations in the future, who knows. But the story doesn't end there. What if I told you that at one point in time, a screenplay existed, or currently exists, for a Team Fortress 2 feature-length animated film? It's hard to find information about this, but there are a few articles from back in the day about it. A long time ago, back when Meet the Spy came out, the staff working on the game saw the amount of attention the promo videos were getting. So a writer at Valve just sat down and started writing a screenplay. And as far as I know, this screenplay is all but complete. A few artists at Valve began animation on it, but to this day, it's either cancelled or just stuck in limbo. This isn't the only Valve game that's said to be getting a movie at some point in the distant future, or more likely an alternate reality. J.J. Abrams himself said he wanted to make a Half-Life and a Portal movie, and Gabe Newell confirmed that it was going to happen, but just like the Team Fortress 2 movie, they're both stuck in limbo. We haven't heard any news or talk about it for a while. Abrams is working on the Star Wars currently, so the consensus is that Bad Robot might start production on the Half-Life film after that movie comes out. But right now we can only speculate. The TF2 movie, however, was closer to becoming a reality than the Half-Life or Portal films. It was more of a show that was gonna happen, but it was still gonna happen, but it didn't. Tyler McVicker of Valve News Network made a much better video about this topic, but here's my version of the story. When Adult Swim got word of a TF2 movie being in the works, they decided to partner up with Valve. Of course we got the Venture Brothers hats, but Adult Swim actually had a TF2 page set up on their website, which was one of the first places where you could watch Meet the Pyro. In the background, however, Adult Swim pitched to Valve a full TV series surrounding the characters of TF2. This is one of the oddest occurrence in animation, since almost every cartoon you've seen was originally pitched from a creator to a network. In this case, it was the network pitching a show to the creator, and Valve agreed to do it. It never got made though. Valve has had a bad history of working under other people's guidelines and time frame. Adult Swim wanted an 11 minute pilot for the first episode by summer of 2013, but what they got was a 20 minute long unfinished animatic in early 2014. Adult Swim got fed up and frustrated and pretty much cut ties with Valve. The TF2 page on their website can only be viewed on the internet wayback machine. Adult Swim commissioned 12 episodes of this show, and only one of those episodes eventually became expiration date. But to my knowledge, the other 11 episodes had nearly completed screenplays written and storyboards drawn. So whatever happened to them? Speculation says that the plot outline of the series ended up being turned into some of the official comics, but there are still some holes in that conclusion. The comics were just using an outline, so what happened to all those scripts? What happened to those storyboards? They all exist at Valve, along with that feature-length TF2 screenplay and the early animations of the film itself. Somewhere deep in Valve's vaults exist a full season and a full-length movie of Team Fortress 2. We could be watching both right now, but that's not the case. 
I want this. I want the show to get made. I want the film to get made. But with Valve behind the wheel, that's likely not going to happen. I still keep a large stockpile of optimism when it comes to Valve. The people have begged for Half-Life 2 Episode 3. They've begged for Portal 3. They've begged for Left 4 Dead 3. And so far, we've had no sign of those ever becoming a reality. But that doesn't mean it'll never happen. I keep a positive outlook toward the future of Valve and TF2. My glass isn't half full. It's completely full. Because one day, I will see that screenplay either on paper or as a full feature-length film. But until that day, all I can do is wait and count to three. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video! This is the longest video that I've ever made, and I had a lot of fun making it, and I wish I could do more videos like this in the future, so it would be really awesome if you could subscribe and catch up with all the other stuff that I make. Make sure to leave a like and share this around. I don't want to have to work this hard on a video and not have anyone see it, so sharing it around is, like, the best thing you can do for me right now. Thanks everyone for watching so much. It's been a pleasure making this, and I hope to make more of these long videos in the future.